I'm here at Lincoln Park in the Capitol Hill neighborhood, and this is your guide to what you can see, do, and eat when you visit here on a trip to Washington, D.C. Hello, my name is Rob. I'm a tour guide and the founder of Trip Hacks DC Tours. On this channel, I share my best tips, tricks, and hacks for visitors who want to explore Washington, DC. This is my second video in my Washington, DC Neighborhoods Guide for Visitors series. So if you dig this sort of video, give it a thumbs up so that I know there's demand to make more. And leave a comment and let me know what neighborhoods you want to see next. After Georgetown, Capitol Hill probably has the most name recognition among people who don't live here in DC. That's because you hear it all the time on the news. Capitol Hill on the news is often shorthand for Congress. But locally, Capitol Hill also means the huge residential neighborhood east of the Capitol building. So we're gonna cover everything from where you can stay in the neighborhood, how to get here, what to see and do, and my favorite places to eat. Washington DC does not have official neighborhood boundaries, but to me, Capitol Hill is defined by the Capitol building to the west, H Street to the north, 13th Street to the east, and I-695 to the south. Now, lots of hotels have the words Capitol Hill in their name for marketing purposes. But because this is such a residential neighborhood, there's only one hotel inside the boundary I just described. That's Capitol Hill Hotel on C Street Southeast. There's a brand new AC hotel located just outside my boundary, right on the other side of 695. And a cluster of hotels near Union Station, like the Phoenix Park Hotel and Yotel. These are all mostly perfectly fine places to stay. Just be aware that they are technically not in the heart of Capitol Hill. Now, let's talk about getting here, since most visitors will probably stay in a hotel elsewhere. If you're coming in on either the orange, blue, or silver metro lines, you can use either the Capitol South or Eastern Market stations. Or if you're coming on the red line, you can get off at Union Station and walk over. Depending on where exactly in the neighborhood you're trying to go, it could be a short few minute walk up to a 15 or 20 minute walk. I highly recommend using an app like Google Maps or City Mapper to help navigate you from the station to your final destination. If you're staying downtown, you could take the circulator bus route that runs on K Street to Union Station. Get off the bus at Union Station and walk from there. Or pick up another circulator bus at Union Station, which runs down Maryland Avenue and then right down 8th Street through the heart of the neighborhood. The 32, 36, and D6 Metro bus routes also run through Capitol Hill. So that's an option if you're willing to learn how to use Metrobus. When I go to Capitol Hill, I almost always take Capitol Bike Share. There are a bunch of bike share stations all over the neighborhood. You can also take a cab or an Uber over here pretty easily. I typically don't recommend driving your own car when you visit DC. But if you do, make sure to pay your meters and double and triple check the signs to make sure you're not leaving your car in a place where it's not allowed. Now, let's talk about what there is to do once you arrive in Capitol Hill. For many people, the primary reason for coming to this side of town is to take a tour of the Capitol building, which is great, and I highly recommend getting one on your schedule if you can. My personal favorite place to visit in the neighborhood is the Library of Congress. The building is absolutely stunning architecture wise and if you're a history buff you can see thomas jefferson's library on display and there are always great rotating exhibits as well this next spot is currently under heavy renovation but the folger shakespeare library is one of the coolest spots in the entire neighborhood the folger shakespeare library actually has the largest collection in the world of items relating to William Shakespeare and his works. That's right, it's not in England, it's right here in Washington, D.C. Across the street is the Florida House, a little visitor center where you can go and learn about the state of Florida. Its unofficial nickname is the Embassy of Florida, and that makes it the only U.S. state out of all 50 to have its own embassy, 
even if it's totally unofficial. Capitol Hill is well known for its concentration of classic DC row houses. If you're into architecture and historic architecture styles, you can wander up and down the streets in this neighborhood for hours and hours taking it in. Where I am right now, Lincoln Park definitely feels like a neighborhood park. But there is a famous, or infamous depending on your perspective, statue of Abraham Lincoln right in the middle. So if you're on a hunt to visit all the Abraham Lincoln historic sites in Washington DC, you've got to come to this park. On 8th Street Southeast is the Marine Barracks Washington. And in the summer, they do a special ceremonial parade on Friday nights, which is definitely unique and worth thinking about doing if you're going to be here on a Friday night in the summer. And of course, there's the historic Eastern Market. It's one of the only remaining public markets in DC, and it's been operating here since 1873. Now, since we're over at the market, let's talk about food and where to eat. There are lots of restaurants in Capitol Hill. The most famous restaurant might be the Tune In on Pennsylvania Avenue. This place has been around for ages. And if you're into the Food Network, you may have seen it before. Another cool spot with lots of history is Mr. Henry's. It's a classic American pub that's been around for over 50 years. There are several Michelin star award-winning restaurants in the neighborhood, like Rose's Luxury, which I've been to, and it's delicious. And Pineapple and Pearls, a $325 per person culinary experience, which unfortunately I have not yet been to. One of my personal favorites is Ambar. I highly recommend doing the all you can eat Balkan experience so that you can try a bunch of different items from the menu. Ted's Bulletin is another popular spot in the neighborhood and great if you have picky eaters in your group because it's an elevated diner food style menu but it has something that everybody should like. If you come to the neighborhood during breakfast hours, I really like the market lunch at Eastern Market. My two favorite breakfast items are the Blue Bucks pancakes and the Brick sandwich. For something quick and easy, District Taco has a location in the neighborhood. I've talked about these guys a bunch in my various Cheap Eats videos. And while these next two places aren't necessarily winning any culinary awards, Capitol Hill still has two of the few remaining Greasy Spoon Diners in DC. There's Jimmy T's on East Capitol Street and Pete's Diner on 2nd Street Southeast. The Greasy Spoon is kind of a dying breed, so it's pretty cool that these two spots are still around. They're both only open pretty limited hours in the morning and early afternoon. So make sure to double check those hours in advance if you want to eat here. And now I want to know from you. Have you been to Capitol Hill before? Which of the places in this video did you check out? Leave a comment down there and let me know. And then I highly recommend checking out another Trip Hex DC video like this one. Just go ahead and click or tap right over here, right there, right now. Enjoy your trip.